Hello everybody, we're now going to talk about fractures. This is something every human being needs to know. And Maria, you need to speak up with your experience because Maria has just nursed someone with one and can speak to the pain, what happens, the stages you go through when you have a fracture. Maria, you want to talk? Uh, not at the moment. I don't really have anything. It was more it was also my mother being a nurse and being her own advocate and the doctors saying to her okay we'll do this or you know do this and 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 the fact that the sling wasn't working at all mark gave her an ace bandage and it was just hanging is more hanging there so i think um I think you have to go with your instincts and your comfort level with everything. And, uh, and she just knew she didn't want to lose mo motion. Mm -hmm. so she, she was moving it whenever she could. And, uh, but I did hear her last visit that it, the doctor felt it didn't heal as well as it could. So she might have lost some mm -hmm. motion mobility, but mm -hmm. I think knowing her, and once she can get back into the water, yes, I think she'll feel better. Um, but I think, yeah, so it's kind of like sometimes her own knowledge can mm -hmm. is a good and bad thing. It's like a double-edged yeah. sword. Yes. Uh, and and then and then we we all got overwhelmed with so much too. Yes. There was just yes. so much going on. Uh, but but just manage just and just taking baby steps. Yes. Uh, you know, like I said, making the, the room comfortable, making her just the, just the little things were helpful. But yeah, the fracture itself, you just got to let the body do what it's going to do. Exactly. It's yeah. got to heal at its own pace. Yeah. Only the body can heal it and nothing else. And everything you're doing is supporting that healing. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Anyone else broke a bone and want to say something about fractures? Well, I will say something when my mother um, <laughs> broke her elbow and um, forearm, a bit of her forearm, during an earthquake <laughs> that wow. ended up in the hospital. Now, they put her in a split cast, which I was not aware of why, you know, but they, they did that because of, I guess swelling, it gave her a chance to, you know, open it up and make more room for her. The thing is my mom had dementia and she figured out how to take the cast off. Oh my goodness. But uh, the good news of that is had she kept it in the cast all that time as they wanted her to, <laughs> she wouldn't have healed as quickly. She took it off and she somehow was able to move it and um, she healed much faster than they predicted. Mm -hmm. That so, is brilliant, um, that is wonderful, yes. Yeah, so here again, and I, I mean, even though she had dementia, she used her intuitive skills. Yes, and your body knows what the right thing to do is. Guys, when yes. you put these polio patients in braces, they became lifelong cripples. Yeah. Everybody know about Sister Kinney, who treated polio very differently. She gave them physical therapy. After a month or two or two years, you could not tell these people had had polio. Mm -hmm. And so the old treatments for this, be still, don't move, are just terrible, terrible, terrible because your body has to guide you in the motion and the rest. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can put it in a sling, but you will feel compelled to move it. You will feel the need to have motion and the body will heal much better if there's blood flowing there, lymph flowing there, cerebrospinal fluid flowing there and it's not you know stuck in a in a, a lockdown position so very good point very good point can can you can you explain to us though you know because i i used to work for someone who fell and her had such pain in her hip they x-rayed her no no nothing's broken third day they found a fracture, a hairline type fracture. Mm -hmm. And um, then she had surgery and et cetera, et cetera. And for me, when I um, banged my hand against that book thing mm -hmm. and my hand went back more than 90 degrees, 
I did not want to go in and see somebody. I didn't feel that anything was broken, but here again, I wasn't sure. How can you, is there any way we can test, mm -hmm. you know, and be certain? And I mean, it seems fine. And I've been doing the, you know, um, comfrey, the bone knit, mm -hmm. and just in case. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can use my hand. It's just those three fingers that are mainly the mm -hmm. problem. At the, yeah. Well, I'm not sure. They're, yeah. So, so a lot of it is your intuition. A lot of it is current circumstances and what you expect them to do in a hospital. Like <laughs> if, if it is crumpled, you know, your bone is crumpled, you will know, you know, it's oh, yeah. all, in, all in pieces. You will know you have multiple fractures and it needs, the pieces need to be pulled out. Like they're like shrapnel in your body. Or if it's a simple fracture, it just needs to be, you will, know from the pain intuitively and you need to have the courage to either do it go to the hospital or not go to the hospital to me that's the biggest thing the purpose of our meetings guys is to give you the courage to say i know it hurts like hell i'm gonna take arnica 200 c 1m whatever and i think my bone is not broken into smithereens um i i can handle this and i would say get an x-ray if, if you feel that there's more that needs to be done, but don't expect them to miraculously fix things for your fractures because pretty much your body only can do it. Yeah. And, and so I would say intuition, have courage, bones routinely break. And in this, in this uh, thing session, we're gonna understand how fractures get healed how electric currents pass between your two broken bones and your red blood cells actually de-differentiate um, to form bone cells, osteoclast and osteoblast. They de-differentiate to form marrow cells. They de-differentiate to form your connective tissue and you gotta let your body do it. Mm -hmm. And the, what will stimulate that is for you to have stability, but also some motion and all the foods that help you get that electric current through you and especially grounding yeah grounding 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 you might feel you might get the sense when you've broken your and i have not broken a bone but i think i would feel the need to ground as i did when i had the boring i felt the need to ground because that, that was very healing and that is because the earth is at 7.8 schumann hertz and literally you are picking up electrons from the ground and using those to heal your uh, tissue. Yeah, and I think it's a different type of pain you feel if it's broken. I mean, yes. I did not feel that sharp, whatever pain. Mm -hmm. But the thing that, how much longer does nerves take to heal? Then? Long like time. I know, yeah. Long time. Nerves take a long time, but it will heal. If you're eating, if you're drinking raw milk, if you're I getting am. enough cod liver oil into your body uh -huh. and if you're getting sunshine and grounding, you will heal. You will heal. And your healing powers, are, I've, you know, the, the quality of your extremities is beautiful. You know, your fingers, they, they'll heal very fast. Yeah. I have a story about uh, fractures. I think the only time in my life it happened, I was, I think, a preteen and I really love to play softball. And at two different times, they broke my little finger. Mm -hmm. And they, I went to the hospital not knowing any different mm -hmm. to do than that, and they put it in a cast. Mm -hmm. And then after a certain time, they took it off. And mm -hmm. I looked at it later and I said, well, it's not quite straight or it's not quite there. Mm -hmm. But later, because I really love to play the piano, my piano teacher would give me exercises because my for my hands, mm -hmm. which are fairly small compared to a lot of major piano players, but I could stretch further. Mm -hmm. than I would if, if the fingers weren't at an angle slightly. I mean, it's not <laughs> significant, but a little bit. So I'm not sure if that's a benefit of breaking in and hey, out. It works for you. <laughs> you got stretchy fingers from the break. <laughs> that's a good one. A um, universal gift. It's a gift. It's a think of it as a gift. Many people break their toes. Guys, when you break your toes, the hospital can't do anything. Take a popsicle stick and tie it to, or tie two toes together, tape them up and you can create your home splints. Yeah. And what I find is you break it once, you break it twice. I mean, you hit it once, you lose sensation and you hit it in the same spot again. Mm. 
and uh, and the uh, and you can revert you can fix it right away. Um, last year, I think it was the year before, I broke my little toe coming out of the tub, and it hurt like it was at 90 degrees to my foot. So Ooh. I put it back in place. I splinted it up with the next toe, band-aided it up, and I took Arnica 1M. I was taking every five minutes. Oh, it hurt like hell, but it healed. It healed just fine. And then I hit it again. Mm -hmm. Horrible, but that healed too. So your bones are perfectly capable, but you gotta give them raw milk. Raw milk is the big healer. Mm -hmm. If you can fi fix juices for yourself, freshly pressed, that's the big healer of fractures. So tell your mom to drink raw milk and lots of fresh juices from the juice shop. The juice shop and Urban Remedy have cold pressed uh, green juices. Uh, Maria. Uh, the thing she had a hard time with is I bought all those green juices you suggested and she didn't like the taste of them at all, but she's definitely doing the milk. Awesome. But, but her other concern was her celiac, was her gut. Oh, was her all right, throat. right. So it was such a, that was the, the double-edged sword. She like, she wanted to do everything, but then her body, her tummy was literally like going, I'm sorry, I can't yeah, do yeah. this. No, with her. So that, yeah. That was the tough part. It was like, you're like, oh, yeah. 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 And for her, the most important thing then was chicken soup and collagen. Yeah. And so she finally, when people asked her what she needed, she goes, I want chicken soup. So people have been bringing her soup and she's got it in the freezer. So, and I can tell she's a little bit more enlivened. So yeah, the, she, you know, she's better at asking and uh, they're getting a lot of help, which is good. Good. I think <laughs> was the stress level for me was yes. <laughs> there, there are hard people to ask for help. Yeah, so, yes, yes. they're very independent, yeah. very independent. Yeah, and they're good at giving help, but not, mm -hmm. but they're yes, getting good yes. at it. Good, good, good. Oh, that's awesome. So yes, I should say that raw milk, cod liver oil, beet kvass, chicken soup, collagen, lots of connective tissue stuff. Is she grounding? I uh, I asked. She tried a couple times. Now that, I mean, you, you normally have good weather there in California, so maybe I should plant that seed. She is back in the garden, so mm -hmm. at least if, she, if she's not wearing gloves and she's getting that, Some, yeah, if she's getting, but, yeah. Um, maybe I can try to convince her to take her shoes off and put her feet in the yeah. grass. Put her, chair sit, near, put her chair near the raised bed, take her shoes off and stick her, plant her feet in the, in the soil there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Just put a chair up to the, to the soil. Yeah. And just do it. And yeah. yeah. Do okay. It. I'll suggest that. Okay. And you know, I, mean, I mentioned this like the last time, but I put on nice warm socks mm -hmm. that are natural fiber and you can ground through them and your feet don't get quite so cold. There you so, go. Perfect. So I've been running around looking for my phone, not wearing shoes. I just go into the stores because mm -hmm. I'm just grounding. All, I don't like shoes anymore. Yes. You know, I just love grounding. Yes, yes. And and the key is to know that whatever age you are, you're going to get better. Have the confidence, have the tenacity. Uh, don't quit. And your mom's not a quitter. One of the things I would say is please do not get any boosters. Um, I have seen so many. I have clients, actually, elder uh, elders who have, after their first shot, they started to get very dizzy, 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 dizzy. They started having falls. Falls resulted in fractures, fractures resulted in death. So it's a direct effect of a lot of these um, medications, jabs, shots, avoid, avoid, avoid all of that forever afterwards. Mm -hmm. if, if you have any kind of uh, dizziness, um, especially um, related to this, the Voldemort illness, the jabs, etc. Phosphorus is your remedy, guys. Phosphorus will make it better. When you're standing and walking or you wake up, take phosphorus. Mm. For people who are, have issues getting up, it's bryonia. But if you're standing and you feel dizzy or if you even turn, there are three remedies, conium, bryonia, and phosphorus. And one of those will apply. For Margaret, bryonia is not the right remedy. For her, phosphorus is the right remedy. For Marlene, bryonia or conium is the right remedy. So for different people, 
depending on your concomitants, use different mm -hmm. remedies for dizziness. If you've had COVID recently, you're going to be dizzy many times. Um, I, uh, every time I got this illness, for about a month afterwards, I tend to be dizzy. Mm -hmm. And so I take FOSS, whoop, and in seconds, it goes away. So remember that fractures are connected to balance and loss or lack of balance. And you got to address that before you address the fracture and, and to ensure it doesn't happen again. So she needs to be on phosphorus from time to time, you know, like a 12 seed or low potency water dose a couple of times a day. It will affect the, it will heal the heart. It'll heal the vascular system and it'll heal the dizziness. One of the things I've learned through some of my uh, Tai Chi Qigong teachers, it's actually in traditional Chinese medicine, the process of having the bones be hardened. And some of the, the effects as it's described in the literature is to have bones like iron. And I've had my teachers show me, this demonstrate actually with very big, strong people that they couldn't be moved. They couldn't be broken, they couldn't be hurt. So that's just something that I use as part of my reminder for practice, that in addition to treating things like with homeopathy, there are some things about allowing the bones to be able to be denser and stronger. Yes, yes. And their nutrition. Mm. So now you were talking about different kinds of dizziness, because I remember last time you talked, if you turn your head quickly, mm -hmm. that's considered dizziness, not vertigo, right? Um, people will describe it in their own terminology. Some people will say, oh, I'm dizzy or I feel nauseous. And uh -huh. so listen carefully to their words. If they feel dizzy in bed while turning their heads, conia maculatum in potency is a wonderful remedy. Uh -huh. If they feel dizzy raising their head out of bed, raising, that's a bryonia typically, but uh -huh. it could be interchangeable. If they're dizzy walking on the road at 10 o'clock in the morning, like I was, that's a phosphorus. If they're dizzy after an influenza illness like this one, very likely phosphorus will work for them. So when you say dizzy while walking, you mean you just don't feel your balance or something? Oh yeah, I mean, I have never experienced dizziness until I got COVID. And after that oh. month, I was dizzy. I had to hold on to Richard or Katie or whoever. Oh, was okay. Yeah, yeah. Or I had to sit down. Yeah. Okay. I was afraid I would fall down. Yeah. And and guys, sit down. If you're in doubt, sit down. Yeah. Please don't injure yourself. And so a lot of these are the underpinning of why fractures happen. To prevent future fractures, you want to put padding around your bed. You want to make sure you're not dizzy. You want to make sure your heart is in good condition. You want to make sure you don't have thrombosis. And, and that's a different set of homeopathic remedies. And we'll talk about those. What's thrombosis? Thrombosis is blood clots. There's a lot of thrombosis oh. from, from, this, uh, from the jab. And, and also cardiovascular, either tachycardia, bradycardia, pericarditis, inflammation of the outer um, uh, and endocarditis, uh, outer membrane of your heart, inner and it, is it just exacerbates your underlying condition. So if you're already dizzy, you take a shot, you're like double dizzy, and now you're falling down all the time. So it is important to understand the etiology of why it is happening. Mm -hmm. And if you feel dizzy, be prepared. And that's the way to taking care of yourself. Be prepared. Don't stress, don't, don't worry about it, don't give up, don't panic. Remember that if it's happened once, you need to be prepared in case it happens again. So you need all the remedies. You need to have, say, cayenne on hand if you have heart issues. If you have other issues, you need to have dizziness. You need to have phosphorus on hand. Mm -hmm. And you have to be very objective. And so in that sense, Margaret is very objective because she was a nurse and she knows which is, it could be good and bad because she knows. <laughs> but it's a good thing to be observant, to be objective. And you have to be able to give everybody else good clams. Your chief complaint, your concomitants, um, your location, where does it hurt, A is for etiology, 
M is for modality. Is it better morning, night, spring, fall, in bed, outside bed, heat, cold? That's modality. P is what is peculiar to you. You might not think it's important, but in homeopathy, it's very important to remember your peculiar symptoms that may have nothing to do with a broken bone. That's mm -hmm. the P. Peculiar, queer, strange. Does, dizzy, does dizziness ever seem to occur because of conditions of the eyes? Absolutely. You can have eye conditions and have dizziness. You could have high or low blood pressure and have dizziness. Mm -hmm. You could have been jabbed and have dizziness. You could be dehydrated. So etiology is super important. Like if you're dehydrated, just drink water, you know, or drink something with beet kvass, a wonderful way to get minerals and fluids into you. Yeah. And then the last thing is sensation. S is for sensation. So remember, guys, clamps, C-L-A-M-P-S. You got to be lucid enough to give someone your clamps. And a acronym will help you remember. Like, I have, I feel dizzy and the tip of my toe is tingling. That is a peculiar symptom. Tell it, tell it to someone because there's a remedy that's exactly fitting that. And finally, you have this thing called sensation, which is super important because it informs a homeopath of your or yourself of your general condition. I feel a sense of great anxiety. I feel like I'm dying. I feel like I want to die. I feel like life is not worth living. I feel very depressed. There are different remedies for these different sensations. I feel like there's an all gone feeling in my stomach or my heart. That's a sensation. So, you know, Sunshine always talks about communications, communication skills. You gotta have those. Be try and describe it in this form and in very clear terms to somebody like me, for instance, so that I can repertorize you properly and I'm not missing half the symptoms. Because if I'm missing half the symptoms, you panic, I panic, and I'm going to give you a general remedy. And that may not be the very perfect yeah. thing. Mm. But mainly, don't worry about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, you've broken your bone, your shoulder is hanging off your, jaw, your ball and socket joint. Uh, let the pain wash through you. At a certain point, endorphin rushes will keep you from getting the pain. But even if it's very painful, remember that with humans, um, well, let me go back to animals. With animals, pain is pain. They just deal with it. They live with it. But with humans, pain is 10% and the suffering is 90%. Oh, gosh, I'm in pain. I'm in pain. Let me take a codeine. Let me take a morphine. Let me take this. No, there's a reason your body is in pain. <clears throat> the pain is setting off a storm of hormones, a storm of corticosteroids, a storm of lymphocytes and monocytes and, and other curative and healing agents to your site of damage. Let it flow through you and embrace it. You know, also remember to breathe. Yeah. As soon as there is something like that, an injury or whatever. I yeah. mean, that's what helped me. It's like, I just sat down and I started to breathe and I said, now, what do I want to do? And mm -hmm. cold and then my Arnica and, you know, so taking that breath mm -hmm. takes away a big amount of the fear and stress and so on. Very good idea. Let's go around the room and see what others have done when they're in a moment of shock to help themselves. Uh, land, ideas? Um. I'm going to pass for now. I want to think okay. about that. That's a pretty okay. big one. All right. Alfonso, ideas? Uh, no, I have no ideas. I haven't uh, really haven't broken any bones or anything or pain. Mm -hmm. Had shock, had shock. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else got any ideas? Hi, this is Claudia. Um, <clears throat> I've been around people who I saw were going into shock. Uh, and so my medical background tells me you lay them down and you put their feet up. So my girlfriend had fallen 
um, on the street behind a car. She didn't break anything, but I just laid her down and had her feet straight up. Um, I put something underneath her so she'd be comfortable, straight up on the car so that more Excellent. blood would come to her, her head because your body, it sends it out to all the visceral mm -hmm. and people can get dizzy and fall again or whatever. So the uh, first aid for shock is uh, feet up. Feet up. Yeah. Lay down, lay down so you can't fall any further. Excellent idea. All right. So be prepared initially before these things happen. Don't worry about it. Don't give up. Don't panic when you're in pain. Don't think, oh my God, COVID, hospitals are shut down. What's gonna happen to me? Don't damage yourself further. Sit down, lay down and try and be objective through the pain. Let the pain wash for you. And for anyone who's had period cramps, there's a way to deal with your cramps without Midol and Motrin. You let them wash through you and you'll find that they get better. One little point, if you do break something and you still can walk, but you think that you need to get 911 over. Um, Cause I, I had that, I didn't break, I've never broken a bone, but my throat closed completely on me. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Apis, Apis, you need to keep Apis. Why, this was years ago. Mm -hmm. And I sat down next to a phone and because I used to teach breathing classes, I just sat next to the phone. I said, if I can get any air in, I'm not going to call 911. And I got like a thread and then two threads. And, and I realized I was not, it was not the day I was going to die. <laughs> and really, I, that's what I thought at first, you know, mm. could this be my last day on earth. And when I allowed my breath to come in and come back, I did call the hospital and I told them what happened. And they said, next time, if you ever call 911, unlock your door. Ah. Never and I'm thought saying, of it's, that. Something, it's something I did not think about. Mm. They, 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 and because it was not in my home, they would have had to have broken the door down wow. to come into me, and it slows it down and everything. So, if you have an accident, if for any chance you have to call 911 and you can get to your door, unlock it. Wow, what a good idea! What a good idea! Yeah, and attitude, you guys, attitude is everything. Yeah, um, all right. So I, have, I want to add one thing, which I was thinking about, because that's a really, really good question. And I don't know that I've had shocked any significant amount in my life, but I think a couple of times partial. And I realized part of what helped me, in addition to the breathing, is being present with whatever is happening in addition to my legs or lying down or whatever it is, but it's being totally, totally present with whatever is happening and not thinking or worrying about other things outside or around it. What will they say? Or what I have to call someone or something like that. Mm. That has to do, I think with me for the fear of death. And it's allowing me to remember that death is quite natural and there's doesn't have to be any fear with it. So if I'm totally present with what it is happening, it helps a considerable amount with me and it did. That's a very good way of putting it. Be with it and it'll lessen the impact of it. Mm. Be with it and, and understand and assume and know that what your body is doing is the appropriate response. Mm. And the second you do that, your body gets empowered. I have had moments of shock um, when my mom passed actually, big moment of shock um, and it's like the blood rushed from my head to my feet. I remember sitting down and then everything else is a blur. I had another moment when a really bad boss screamed at me and I, for the first time in my life, I felt what it was like to have cotton wool in your mouth. And so these are moments of shock. Or if you're in an accident, you know, all of a sudden you're down there with broken bones. Um, anyone else got any ideas? One of the things that just comes to me, it's about the same thing that I said earlier, but I've heard major good, well-known athletes talk about when they're playing in their, at their level, everyone else seems to be going slower. Mm -hmm. 
and they're able to move faster without any effort whatsoever. And to me, that's part of the idea of being totally, totally present, but not being affected by the things that are outside you. Right, right, right. The minute you're affected, it's taking up energy. The precious yeah. energy needs to be allocated to what's going on. Good point, good point. All righty. Does everyone have a kit? We're going to go around the room and make sure everyone has aconitum. Yes? Yes. Yes, yes. Arnica, yes? Yes. Yes. Symphytum, yes? Yes. yes. Rustop, yes. Belladonna, Arsenicum. Yes. yes. If you get mm -hmm. dizziness, Phosphorus, Conium, Bryonia, <coughs> you need all these things, guys. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Turmeric, cayenne. If you have heart ailments, you got to have heart drugs, Arnica, Cretigus. Uh, so underlying conditions are very important. If you have celiac, Merck and Epicac are a wonderful combination to treat celiac disease. So things you can do to shore yourself up, you got to have on hand. All right, get it organized. Um, the other thing you want to do, especially if you have family members or dogs or cats or little children, write it down because you know and I know we're going to forget. And I think mm -hmm. I'm going to remember everything all my life. <laughs> Next day, it's out, out of my mind. Write it down, create a folder for each family member, each pet, and just, just say, I use Belladonna and it worked, or, or it didn't work at all. So once you write things down, you will have it down, because you notice the same thing happens to people over and over again. For one child, this remedy works. For the other child, Gelsemium might work. For the third child, Belladonna might work. So, and for my dog, same thing certain things like Ignatia really works for Travis. He gets very nervous, excited and anxious. Phosphorus works for him when there's thunderstorms. Um, Thuya and Causticum work for warts. So these are the things that work for your family members. Write it down. Write down the dates. Write down the clamps. What conditions did you give that remedy under? And you always got to have a scale of one to 10. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is frequently you you get better and then you forgot that forget that you even had that. I've seen people who had, you know, joint pain, migraines, headaches, and they'd come to me and say, I have joint pain, migraines, headaches, and then I have either constipation or diarrhea. And six months later, like 90% of it is gone and they have some minor other problem. And they say, oh, but I'm still not well. I said, let's go through your scale of migraines. Let's go through the scale of you know, pain, and it's all much better. So always be objective, always make sure you write it down so you can compare it to a previous pastime. Very important. And the remedy and the potency, of course. So getting organized is super important. Don't wait until you have an emergency to get emergency supplies. And uh, there are lots of people that have kits, that sell kits. Helios, I know, sells kits. You can get those bullet boxes yourself and make your own kits. You can sew your own kits. Um, make your kits and have them in alphabetical order. Guys, don't be like my daughter. She's got <laughs> stuff in a big old box and she's, she's throwing bottles out the door to looking for the right one, which is at the bottom of the heap. And when you're in a panic, you don't even read it. You can't even see it. No, no, no. Alphabetical order. All right. Uh, whenever you a, break a bone, tromeal is a great thing to have on hand for everybody. Uh, but understand the elements of it. You need aconitum napellus for shock, arnica for pain. You can, If you have nothing else, just take arnica. It'll make a huge difference, um, followed by whatever symptoms ail you. You know, and, I, just, yeah. I just had an idea for the organization and, you know, it's one thing if you have all your things in alphabetical order, but like you say, can you see it at that time? And I, one thing I thought of, because, you know, I've made uh, like screenshots of things. Mm -hmm. You can photograph your container, your box. And then if you put, have it on your computer or whatever on your screen mm. you can do speech yes and have it go through and identify the different the, i mean in the case that there would be a real problem yes what a good idea it is yes 
You know, that's a very good idea. And that's because I, I give a lot of my friends and relatives little kits, you know. Mm -hmm. So my son-in-law's sister, I gave her a kit. And she didn't know anything about homeopathic. So I just took a picture of all the remedies I gave her. And then she calls me up and said, I have this, this, and this. Oh, what should I do? I looked at the picture and I said, yes. take this because we have this remedy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good, good idea. Very good thinking. Yeah. Okay. I should have done that for my daughter. Damn. <laughs> oh, you still can. <laughs> all, right. Um, all right. So the first order of the day is aconitum napellus to deal with shock. What shock means is you're completely disoriented. You're delirious. You're not reacting. You're salivating or not salivating or dry mouth. Aconitum napellus will keep you alive, keep your heart going, keep your brain functioning, and allow you to get out of the shock without damaging yourself. Repeated doses. If there's a caretaker or a family member, put it under their tongue. Pull out their lip and stick it in. Would that work? Um, I just noticed last week, I don't know what it was I ate, but all of a sudden I felt my heart, you know, beating Found faster it. and, and it was reacting to something I ate or drank. Mm -hmm. Would aconatum be the thing then to? Arsenicum, arsenicum album. Keep six or three C for, for foods that didn't agree with you. Yes. Arsenicum. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Uh, just keep it in your purse. Arsenicum, aconitum, arnica. Yes, got to have those in your purse. And um, you don't take drugs, so no Nuxvamica. Nuxvamica no. is good if you're allergic to some drug. No, no. All righty. And then Arnica, whatever you got, whichever potency you got, uh, repeated doses, under tongue, dry, wet, watery doses, whatever you can find. find. That's the first order of the day. We went through clamps. Yes. You want me to go through clamps again or you got it? Go through it again, please. Okay, C is for chief complaint and concomitants. If you say you have a runny nose or fever, that's the chief complaint. If the location is, if it hurts in your knee or your toe, right. that's location. Etiology is very important. I read of a case um, in um, Kopikar written, this is a wonderful homeopath who lived many, many decades ago. And uh, a pregnant woman had, was on the verge of losing her baby. She had severe abdominal pain and back pain and he couldn't figure out what it was. It turns out that she had, while playing badminton or tennis or something, the bat or the ball had hit her in the belly and he gave her a dose of Arnica. She peed, uh, she peed a lot and the problem resolved itself. So. Wow. He did not give her kidney medications. He did not give her abdominal medications. He based it on the etiology, which was injury to the abdomen. One M arnica, one dose, and she got better. She didn't have to have her pregnancy aborted, and she didn't have to go on antibiotics. Okay. She was gored by a tennis ball. She was gored by a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that's etiology. Understand very clearly what the source of your issue was. If you have a broken bone and it happened because of some other cause, someone needs to uh, mute their phone. I think it's Alfonso. What? You need to mute your phone, my friend. There you go. Okay. And so etiology is very, very important. Did it happen from trauma? Did it happen from grief? You can get cancer from grief. You can get cancers from trauma. Women fall off bikes hurt their breasts with their handlebars, the handlebars, and you develop a lump that is cancerous. That's Arnica. That's not a cancer drug. Mm. Uh, so etiology is very important. Modality is also very important because there are certain drugs, certain remedies that work during the day, during the night, and that is a very important clue for you. For instance, lachesis, the remedy, uh, wakes up into an aggravation. That's the modality. Like you go to sleep and you wake up panting. You wake up with dyspnea, with shortness of breath, your heart pounding, stomach ache. When that happens to you every time you fall into sleep, think lachesis because it is an aggravation that happens when you're sleeping, when you're coming into sleep or going out of sleep. 
pulsatilla, much worse in the evenings. So think about that. Lycopodium, much, much worse between 4 and 8 o'clock. And literally, there are people who have given remedies on modality. You, you, you are, you're feeling sick between 4 and 8, or 4 and 8, you get vomiting, like a podium. Done. Finished. Case closed and solved. That's modality. And then the peculiar symptoms are very important. There's this cough you have, where if you cough, you get pain in your distant parts, meaning pain in your toes, for instance, every time you cough, or pain in your knees, and that's capsicum. And mm -hmm. capsicum will solve that cough. Mm -hmm. So peculiarities are very important. And the sensation is, of course, the emotional, the mental, until that sensation is met by the remedy, the remedy is not going to act. And all of this seems like a bunch of different problems and awfully difficult, but it's not. If you learn, you know, 10 to 15 remedies or 50 remedies or even 100 remedies, you can pretty much treat everything in your life. You never have to see the inside of a hospital or doctor. You're good. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Uh, we have our Roxy. Remember, Roxy had her tumor. 2018, it was tiny. 19, it was a little bigger. 20, it's a little bigger. 21, a little bigger. 22, a little bigger tumor in her mouth. She's surviving, you know? No, I, I give her remedies for her presenting conditions and complaints. We're not taking her in for surgery and getting half her jaw lopped off. Ugh. And she would have died like within two months if I had done that to her. So she's now 15 and a half. Um, she'll end up probably dying at around 16, which is in dog years is what, 112 years. Uh, and this is a dog who was severely mistreated in rescues vaccinated up to her eyeballs, given antifungals, antibiotics, tick medicine, tick collars, heartworm medicine, until she was um, uh, 11 years old. How long? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 4. Yeah, 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. So it's possible with the right environment and homeopathics to even take very distressingly poor um, cases and have them have a good quality of life. She goes for walks. She poops very well every day. She huddles in her room and sleeps a lot, but that's what you do when you're, you know, 105 years old. I have a question that I've asked before, and I think I see my mind still intruding into my acceptance. I realized that if I paid attention to all the little symptoms, I'm calling little, but all the things that are happening to me on a daily basis, I would be using homeopathy for a long, for many, many hours or many, many, I wouldn't want to say often. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering um, how much am I kind of leaning toward using homeopathy to solve everything for me, rather than just allowing me to relax or do some other things where they're not as much bothersome, except when there's something I consider more serious. Do you I get see. the tenor of what I'm saying? Yes, I hear you. 95% uh, of your problems are lifestyle. I would say 5% is homeopathy. Hmm. If you feel down, the first order of the day is to take a cold shower, go for a walk in the sun. If that doesn't help you, then go to Ignatia or, or Metallicum or what have you. Hmm. Uh, but Generally speaking, your bodies and all you folks on this call are, are living true to your bodies, living true to nature. Your bodies have not been sullied with a whole bunch of foreign agents. And so for you, there are very few obstacles to cure, except things that are long gone by and things you can't, like if you have a broken bone that never got healed, never got healed. But uh, but by and large, a healing should be by food, by environment, by grounding, by sunshine and sleep. Right. It is only when you have, and there is this thing, I, I must admit, I have suffered from it too. I, and I have these guinea pigs around me, Travis and Roxy and Richard and Seema and Katie and Kai and Anna. And, and I would look at them and say, oh, need that. And you need that. And you know what my family does? 90% of the time, they ignore it. 
they get better on their own. It's the 10% when they're really sick. <laughs> they will take, they will say, okay, tell me what it was. And, I'll take it. <laughs> and so there's such a thing as too much clamping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point. But the more you do, the better practice you have. I would encourage you to do it all the time. Because right. it's also making you observant. It's getting you out of yourself, out of your own zone, and looking at you from the outside, which is a very good way to look at yourself. And the thing I've said before about look, looking at yourself, if you notice that there's an issue, can you transform your thoughts to picture yourself healed? Absolutely. Absolutely. Instead because of getting worse or, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Because that's exactly what your body is capable of doing. Yeah. Listen, no homeopath, no doctor, no surgeon can fix the things that your body innately and mysteriously can. Yeah. You know, I had an interesting experience. My daughter sent me a picture of a place that she was visiting in Spain. And it's on the coast. You see the coastline. And you see these tall apartment buildings that are built one right next to the other in a row. They look like teeth, mm -hmm. you know, they're tall. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see it better. So I enlarged the picture so I could see what they look like. I really got nauseous looking oh. at them. Oh. And, and I, I wrote to her, I said, you know, that made me nauseous. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I could ever live in that type of setup. Mm -hmm. And then she wrote back, me neither. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was interesting that, Something we look at can have such a strong effect on us too, mm -hmm. you know? So true, so true. Yeah. And, and we need to heed that. We need to pay respect that. Yeah. So with fractures, you have this balance between motion and stability. And only the person knows. Only Margaret knows. Only I knew with my toe how much to move it and how much to rest it. Mm -hmm. And, and you've got to honor that. Alrighty. Okay. Figure out the damage. Figure out the damage first. How much can you bear it? There are people who are stoics and their bones might be crumpled into a hundred pieces and would never go to a doctor. And there are people who will go to a doctor at the drop of a hat. So this is where objective observation will really help you. Like if your bone is hanging loose, I would recommend going to a doctor, especially if, if you suspect multiple fractures. But if it's just a break, if it's in a, an extremity, if you if you put it together and you put it, make it stable and it doesn't hurt, remember pain is your guide. Pain and swelling is your guide. Of course, it's gonna be very swell the first few weeks. Um, X-rays are an important new modern invention. Uh, you should use them with care, but they're super important in resetting bones, if, especially if they need to be reset. Um, slings and stents, splints are very important for stabilizing it, and and then the surgeons will reset bones if they're really, really broken, war damage, accident victims, and so on. So that is something that is more subjective, but I think once you have the calmness, you can pretty much figure out where you need to go with that. And now, if you do have a compound fracture where the bone actually goes through the skin, Yep, you'll see it. Then you have to get someone to deal with that. Yep, yep you. absolutely. Yeah. And we'll go through the different types of bone breaks. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> that's a normal <laughs> bone on your left. Uh, then you have fissures, which is just the bone cracked. And typically, this is with fragile bones. I find that people who I work with are you folks who drink raw milk. The fissures don't happen that much. What will happen to you guys is you'll really get knocked down in a trauma and crack it. Fissures mm -hmm. happen in women who are vegan, who, are, who don't have enough, you know, the right calcium, raw milk, osteoclast, osteoblast working right. People on those, um, what are those medications, those fluoride-based medications that prevent, that prevent fractures, but they actually cause fractures? Yeah. And they make fissures. And so you've got these hairline cracks all over your bones, long bones, and and they can't be fixed because you don't have, you're malnourished and you're on drugs. Mm -hmm. 
If a fissure pops out, that's an incomplete. It's a simple fracture, like it just you fell down and you cracked something. Uh, that's simple enough where you can set it easily from the outside, put it in a sling, uh, give it some motion after a few days, and with arnica and anti-bruise remedies, it, it really works beautifully. And I suspect, what sort of fracture did Margaret have, Maria? She's away. Okay, okay. Um, so simple fractures, fairly easy, multiple, harder. You know, if you've really broken a lot of bones, you, you wanna get it x-rayed, you wanna get the shards pulled out. Um, even with that, in the old days, there were people, war, war wounds and all that, where people recovered pretty good from a lot of, they would get septic, they would get sepsis and uh, internal infections from all this. And, uh, then there's complicated fractures, where, right? Like you said, the bone pops out and it really has to be reset by a doctor or compound fractures. Uh, so there's, it's a range, it's a range. And if you didn't have a big trauma, if your diet is good, chances are you're gonna be somewhere between a simple and a simple, really simple, a little crack, a little crack. All right, what is the best medicine? Raw milk. Raw milk, raw salmon, raw liver, eggs with butter in them, uh, lots of minerals sauteed in that uh, fat. That is the best way you can heal your bones. Give it the nutrition it needs uh, every single day. And the key is to get help. Don't hesitate to get help. People would love to help you, bring you all of these things. Uh, but I would say raw milk is key. If you have no one around you, if you have no help, get someone to leave a bottle of raw milk outside your door and drink it, please. If you drink nothing else. I have a question about raw milk. Um, mm -hmm. I've been drinking now a cup a day. Mm -hmm. And toward the end of the period of, with the, the, the milk, it starts to slightly sour. And I've gotten used to that. But mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you can say anything about that, whether the advantage, disadvantage, all of that stuff. Oh, no, that's how people drank milk in the old uh, days. Right. On the farms, they drank fresh milk. And by the time it went to the village houses, it was clabbered. Mm -hmm. And raw milk clabbers, it lactoferments in the most beautiful way, whereas pasteurized milk putrefies. So raw milk you left on the counter, you can keep chugging it for a week, you'll go from fresh milk to clabber, which is like buttermilk or yogurt, and it's delicious and good for you. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't like some of those things, if you can't digest them, by all means eat other things. Broth, chicken broth, which is rich in collagen. Uh, get someone to get you feet, slash the feet, make yourself a <laughs> collagen broth. Try not to eat powdered collagen and all these things. You know, they've got all sorts of industrial toxins in them. Make your own. It's not difficult. You know, people were telling me, oh, I want a source of beet kvass. It's so simple to make your own beet kvass. It's so yeah. simple to make your own chicken broth. Just throw a chicken, crawl over to the, to the stove, throw a chicken in a pot and keep drinking from that pot with your non-broken hand. How simple is that? <laughs> Eat sauerkraut, you know, you can buy it in stores now. But you need ferments. The, the bacteria are going to help you heal by making butyrate, by making all the vitamins you need, by converting your minerals into a more digestible form. And you need the connective tissue and the bone healing substrates. Um, there's a guy by the name of Becker who did a lot of um, research on healing. He took fractures that fail to heal, meaning this is in people who just have fractures that don't heal, apply DC current <coughs> to either side of the bone and the fracture healed. There's a man who was trapped in a fox trap and for months and months and months, the fracture didn't heal. They were gonna break his, um, amputate his leg, came to Becker, he applied the DC current with uh, silver um, uh, electrodes and it healed. He never heard from the guy again. He went right back to trapping. 
So what, what electricity, we underestimate or rather we don't understand the healing power of energy. The sun energy converts into electricity in our body. The earth's energy converts into electricity in our body. And what's happening, if you look at this, can you see my arrow? Moving around? Yes. Between, no. between the electrodes. My arrow is moving the around. Color. Yeah. yeah. What's happening here is well, your red blood cells start to shape shift. Mm -hmm. And they turn into cells that make cartilage. Mm -hmm. They turn into, they first de-differentiate, meaning they become stem cell-like cells, and then they re-differentiate, meaning they take on the tissue structure of the area they're trying to heal. It is a remarkable thing that the body does. Otherwise, how do you knit bones? There's no bone material there. It's your marrow cells, your red blood cells, that in the presence of electricity are able to go from being hemoglobin carrying red blood cells to shucking off their coats and becoming osteoclast, osteoblast, cartilage, um, connective tissue, and so on. Do you know of any practitioners locally or West Coast or Hawaii or any place else where those people are available and use the system? Uh, there are also, there are natural doctors who do this for for very very recalcitrant factors. Um, you can rig it up yourself. I mean, literally, that's what he did. He put a um, a silver electrode next to the bone on one side, passed a DC current, and and healed this man's wound. And he did it over and over again, and all sorts of animal bones. Um, it was incredible. And these mm. are tiny currents. It's very, very tiny currents, pulse DC currents. Um, I don't specifically know of a doctor who can do it, but you can sit in the sun. You mm. can sit on the earth. That's why you're naturally attracted to grounding when you have broken bones. Because your Schumann, your earth is sending up electrons into your, into your body. Your bones are, the crack is picking it up and it's helping it to heal. At the, at the Schumann resonance, resonance of the earth is the same as your body's. So this is really how fractures heal. Fractures don't heal by eating those fluoride laden pills. <laughs> they don't heal by putting it in a sling forever. They don't, the body is healing it. And what the homeopathics are doing is symphytum is helping to create that electric current. In homeopathic doses, which is comfrey, really, it is helping to your bone to literally knit by creating uh, the pulsed electricity with the minerals, with with the dynamic properties it has, and so on. Does does that activity, for instance, of sitting in the sun or grounding, have the same or more powerful effect than, say, taking like bone knit as an herb? Um, to do some of the same process? Uh, take everything. Take the herbs, sit in the sun, help the sustenance, the minerals in your body to actually become charged, charged so that they can do their job. Mm. Uh, cold pressed juices have a lot of potassium in, in them. So the ion exchange carries on so that so that you have easy water, what, what, what uh, Gerald Pollack calls easy water. So your cells are structured, your tissues are structured, you have ample electricity coursing, which is why it's very important not to have scar tissue in your body, because through your meridians, the electricity flows. Mm -hmm. And the more you get it at that site, the faster you'll heal without scarring. The idea is to let go of the idea of a magic pill yeah, yeah. Do it all. Yeah, yeah. There's no magic pill. If you take chemicals to fix it, I guarantee you it will not work at heal as well as it did on its own. And uh, the homeopathic remedies are based again on similia, so on the right similima, uh, the minimum dose, um, uh, not goosing it up with antibiotics and steroids and this and that. There are homeopathics for everything from bruising to pain to infection. And you're gonna get a speedy cure like my belly. You know, it's it was a you know in 12, 13 days it was completely healed. I was going around gardening and using the wheelbarrow again. 
and now I have this little uh, egg and over time the egg will disappear and I feel because I took those remedies I didn't get a hole in my stomach a hernia which would have to be patched up with surgery so the cure is speedy it is at a pace where the body can regenerate those tissues it is gentle mainly there's no side effects because it's the side effects that kill us guys it's not the effects of that drug it's the side effects that are the killer and there's no complications and, and the thing to remember here is it's stimulating your life force. Um, that's what it's doing to help heal. Um, so for fractures, I would say for the trauma, you take aconite, trauma, shock, fear, arnica for the injuries and bruises. If you fall down and hit your head, please take belladonna or glonoina is wonderful too. If you were in the hot sun, your head hit the pavement, take glonoina prevent concussion, prevent breaks. Um, if you have tendon and ligament damage, Ruta 6 Calphos 3X is a wonderful combination. And that's what I'm giving to Roxy because it is the Banerjee protocol for osteosarcomas of uh, dentinal ligament origin. So it's bone slash tissue where she has a tumor and it seems to be fine. You know, she, I give it to her twice a day. She is able to eat her food. It's growing, but at a very slow pace. And the rest of her body is perfectly fine. Um, so Ruta Calphos is great for tendons and ligaments and scarring. Thiocinamine is another very good thing for, and I should add that. Mm -hmm. I never remember to add that. Thiocinamine for scar tissue. Um, and then, um, Calphos, six steps to complement the healing, which is calcium, phosphorus, and homeopathic doses. If you have severe swelling, take apis. If you're bleeding at the site, hemorrhaging badly, crotalus oridus is wonderful. If you have lacerations at that site, um, like it hurts, then you have nerve pain going up and down, or you have an infection, hypericum and calendula are wonderful. If you have a puncture, like if you got hit by something and then punctured by this iron nail, Leadum is very good. If you suspect infection in the site of your fracture, don't take antibiotics. Take pyrogenium, echinacea, calendula. If you have gangrene, arsenicum, and hepar are wonderful in potency. So you should have these things with you. And if you don't have a one M, that's fine. Just take whatever you got and take it more frequently. I have a question with, it's not fractures, but it's something you mentioned about your coincidence. You said if you if it were, there was a hernia, you'd have to have it surgically repaired. Does mm -hmm. that mean it goes past a certain place where homeopathy would not be directly effective and you'd have to have another modality? Yes, like if you have a hole there and you haven't treated it homeopathically from the beginning, and if there's really a hole, it's a gash, and it may or may not meet you may you may need to have stitches there to sew it up see and if if that's the case then you you will get into surgery where they put a like a mesh underneath in it and sew up the top and that's what i was afraid of that i would get a hernia because it's close enough to my umbilicus and then i'd have to go in for surgery which i absolutely did not want so instead i have this tumor a little little rock and it's it'll slowly heal but I will not have a hernia now. So this relates to me directly. I've had a hernia repair twice. Mm -hmm. What they put in the mesh and sewed it up and all that stuff. And strangely as it is, the doctor who did the work says, you know, I find this in a lot of architects. As if... <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? It's, a, it's kind of a, you know, one of the side effects of being an architect. <laughs> That is funny. Because they sit on a stool and don't move around or something like that. Oh, that's right. And odd angles and you get impaled on things. That's right. Uh, but then after that, I would think I haven't had um, any, I guess I call it side effects from the situation, mm -hmm. except for a, um, I think I mentioned the last time about a massage therapist who worked very, very deeply to loosen scar tissue. But is there, are there homeopathic things to do post um, surgery or is that just let the body heal? Absolutely, homeopathic things must and should be done post-surgery. And there's nothing like Ruta 
Rustox, uh, Calfos are the remedies to treat connective tissue. Even the sometime fascia. after the event. After the event, uh, not long after the event, but short time after the event. All of these will help to heal, to stretch it, to reduce the need for, you know, steel mesh patches, etc., at the site. And staphysagria, so surgical wounds, um, and then anesthesia is phosphorus to get over the effects of the anesthesia. So the more of this you do, the more you're stimulating your life force to heal it. Uh, pronto and double quick time without complications. Mm. But I would focus on food as well. You know, chicken soup and raw milk uh, mm. can't go wrong. Great. Um, if you have gangrene, you know, people get infection and sepsis, lachesis and arsenicum are excellent, excellent remedies. Uh, some people get fevers after they've broken bones, um, concussion, memory loss, sprains, strains. Uh, for these, phosphorus, arsenicum, calicarb, Nat sulf is great for concussions, uh, rust tox, you might have cardiac. And then again, you look at the etiology. Why did this happen? Was I dehydrated? Do I have kidney disease? Do I have liver disease? Do I have heart disease? And address the underlying condition. Address the underlying condition so it doesn't repeat, because I guarantee you it will repeat if that's not addressed. How long do you take it? You take it until you feel better. This is not an antibiotic. This is not a supplement. You're observing your body and your symptoms and you keep taking it until you're much, much better. And, you know, I'm a little bit scatty, so I don't always take it, you know, three a day or four a day, uh, but do what you can, do what you can and your body will be a guide to taking it. And what I wanted you guys to do, and you're already there, you know, and take it intuitively. Homeopathy is medicine you can take with intuition. Oh, I, I feel this. I feel a burning from the underside of my little egg. What is that? That's a wound on the bottom. What is the wound treatment that covers many layers of your skin? Staphysagria. Eat staphysagria, instant results, instantly better. Um, and once you know these little artifacts, you can apply them much more intuitively without consulting a materia medica and you'll you'll find you'll be successful but at the very least arnica aconitum symphytum please and for for afterwards you know to deal with the swelling and so on the appropriate remedies questions um uh all right no questions I have, um, a com I have a comment though, one thing that I have seen with other people who've broken bones is they move, can I say this, more quickly than the situation calls for. They, meaning? They've, they've hurried or they've sped or they quickly got up or they tripped on something and they were not acting with the presence of where they were and what they needed to do. It's just like, um, one of the things that I've learned, which has been extremely helpful to me, is when I get up from bed, I, one of my teachers suggested that I stand but don't move yes. for a few seconds till the chi, the, the life force kind of gets into my legs. So I don't just kind of get up and start walking around because then I trip and be dizzy or bump into things or something like that. That is absolutely brilliant. And that's such an important point. Actually, Bernstein made that point in one of his patients. All that patient had to do before he got up was to sit in bed with his legs hanging off the sides mm -hmm. of the bed. It would have prevented his uh, dizziness, fall, and death. Yeah. And so that is so important. If you know you have a condition of dizziness, you just get up and sit in bed and make that a rule. I'm going to sit until I count to 30 or whatever, and only then slowly get up uh, and do my... When I, I had not experienced dizziness as I did after this, uh, my bouts of um, uh, this thing, uh, COVID. And I, when I did, it was interesting. I became careful, you know. Uh, I would walk, and if I felt something, I would just stand or hold someone's hand or something or sit. Uh, and you got to do that. You got to do that. Good point. Very good point. Um, what if it doesn't work? 
gee, it's not working. I don't know what I'm doing. You had a question? Someone had a question or comment? No, okay. What if it's not working four dose rule after four doses, you should feel better. But I would say when you have swelling of this magnitude or bruising, please just continue to take the Arnica or an Aconitum and Symphytum, it will get better, I guarantee this. If it doesn't work, if you completely have a wild remedy off the walls, after four doses, you don't feel better, you antidote it with Camphor 200 and before you move on to the next remedy. Other homeopathic antidotes are coffee, mint tea, camphor, volatile oils, go out and sniff your rosemary, and then you go to the next medicine. But realize, even if you screw up, even if you take the absolutely wrong remedy or a remedy that works 10%, you're better, doing better than antibiotics, steroids, uppers, downers, blood thinners, <laughs> anti-anxiety meds, did I say steroids? Yes. And all these other extraordinarily toxic things that will result in far worse downstream symptoms for you. Mm -hmm. So when people say, oh my goodness, you might prove it. Homeopathic drugs are dangerous. No, 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 no. They are they're literally like angels and lambs compared to the allopathic, industrially prepared synthetic patented molecules that your body uh, doesn't recognize. So it will get rid of the swelling, but it'll come at great cost to your health. Um, welcome your tears, your saliva, your body fluids, your oozings, your white suppurations, your yellow suppurations, your uh, bleeding and so on, but treat it with the right homeopathics. And then you go to the next one. Once that thing is cured, you go to the next one. And that you have to know, you know, now my, I'm no longer bruised, you can stop taking Arnica. I'm no longer swollen, you can stop taking Apis. Looks like it's healing well. All I gotta do is sit in the sun. Uh, uh, maybe I reduce the dosage, the frequency of the Symphytum dosage. So uh, that'll come to you. And if you if you are wrong, it's not a tragedy. It's not a bad accident. It'll not kill you. When you mention other antidotes, you mentioned coffee. Mm -hmm. Would that be the same as, say, taking coffee cruda? Uh, no, no. Coffee the coffee. Okay. Very different. Coffee cruda is homeopathic. You take that for a long... Actually, coffee or cruda is a great remedy for itching at night and restlessness in sleep. You get restless and you itch at night twice a day, try try coffee or cruda too, but do the lavender first so we know the variables. Of course, thanks. Okay, and how do I know if it's working? I knew mine was working by looking at my tummy. Uh, you're gonna know it's working by your ability to move your fingers or shoulders or what have you. Uh, you start to feel better. One of the first things that happens is mentally, you don't feel so dejected, so panic, so depressed, your vital force increases. It's the first thing that happens. The intensity of the symptom wanes. The duration, it was coming every two minutes, now it's every five minutes. So that's an objective way to know. You can't just say, oh, I took this medicine and now the pain is still there. No, 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 no. You got to observe it objectively. Uh, after uh, every how many minutes is the is the throb happening and what is it on a scale of one to ten it was unbearable then is it less more bearable now it means it's better uh, and you got to be patient and observe acutely so the the reason i'm saying that is this is a very different way of looking at this we are very western we want pronto pronto results you know in i was in india and people were saying uh, someone told them, oh, I use homeopathy. And they said, oh, yeah, I love homeopathy. Anytime I get sick, I take a crocine first, which is paracetamol. Then I take homeopathy. Then I take <laughs> <laughs> And then I get really well. And I'm going, no, you're just going to get sicker again faster. You know? <laughs> but you, you can't explain it to people. These are totally different things you guys you're doing. Every time you take a paracetamol to reduce fever, you're extending the length of that disease. 
Then you take a homeopathic medicine to stimulate your body. So you're generating that fever all over again. So you go from suppressing your fever to creating that fever to suppressing it to then eating some herbals from Ayurveda or whatever, whoever concocted. So you're just gonna get sick with this smorgasbord of tree. And that's because people do not understand the nature of homeopathy. It is a simil similia similibus curantur. You respect the body's fever or cough or whatever, and your medicine is literally sending it in the same direction, whereas paracetamol is going to tamp it down. And it's hard. It's hard when you're in pain or have high fever to do these, or when your doctor is breathing down your neck and saying, no, those, none of those little white pills, they interfere with our allopathic medicines. You know, people say that. No, no, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Um, how do you deal with children and dogs? You observe them. They will tell you a lot more with your act, their actions and behaviors than adults can tell you with their mouth frequently. You just look. You know, I just thought of something that um, is not actually on this subject. It is on fractures. But Definitely, one thing that helps to prevent fractures is have good lighting. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, yes. Because um, I used to, I was living at a place sharing a home and the woman moved out, but her cat, would, she left her cat behind, was gonna come back and get it. Mm -hmm. And because she wasn't there, the cat was sleeping at the top of my stairs. Mm -hmm. And I decided to go downstairs without turning the lights on. Oh my goodness. And I stepped on the cat and tumbled all the way down to the bottom. I did not break anything, but I sure did injure my ankle and the mm -hmm. tendons and you know all that stuff, the ligaments. So I will say, use light, use good lighting so that you don't have an accident. Yeah. That's such a good thought, such a good idea. Yes, I gotta tell you the story of my next door neighbor dick who tripped over he was holding his laundry basket in his hand and the cat was on the landing and he tripped <laughs> yep. like that uh broke his ribs went Ooh. to marin general promptly got a hospital infection uh had to be intubated he got MRSA and wasn't there for two months oh my god yeah and if he'd never gone to the hospital his ribs would have healed just fine yeah 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 lighting and watching your step very important Yes. Anything else? All right. How to dose? Dose uh, either 30C, two or three globules dry on your tongue, under tongue, uh, or 200C if you have it for an emergency to start. You place a pellet or two under the tongue or pellets in water, stir vigorously, take a teaspoon every couple of hours as needed and you reduce the frequency of dosing when relief begins. Please label your jars because you'll have five jars and you will not know what's what. Or you can just rotate and then you don't have to leave. In the Question. Room. Yeah. Uh, I previously had where I woke up and my heart was pounding. Mm -hmm. and what I do is try and take a deep breath to lower it. Mm -hmm. What causes that? Um, that is uh, adrenaline, if, especially if it is towards morning, like two or three. Exactly. Yeah, your body is preparing to get up um, and you don't have enough blood sugar in your body. So your liver, uh, your cortisol is released from your adrenals and it tells your liver to convert the glycogen into glucose and you get thumping heart. The way to deal with that is to eat some carbs at night so that you have some blood sugar in your body and you don't wake up and eat eat to stomach fullness, like eat a nice fibrous meal, which sticks with you with some carbs in it so that you don't wake up with palpitations in the middle of the night. And the uh, homeopathic solution to that is, yeah, what was the homeopathic solution when you wake up into an aggravation, guys? Quiz. Coffee crude. No, 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 you wake up into an aggravation. Oh, um, item. It's a snake. It's a snake remedy. Oh, um, staff, this staff, lachesis, 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 yeah. Lachesis is when you wake into an aggravation. Lachesis 200 
Renee, in a water dose by your bedside or before um, in the evening. But the best thing is food. Get some carbs into your body. So would, is, when you say carbs, what about having like some blueberries or, you know, some fruit for that? Uh, that'll stay That's for a very good. short time. Get complex carbs that'll be in your gut. Oh, for longer time. Okay. Longer time. Brown rice. All righty. How did I have a quick, one question about um, the amount of water and how that, if you do a water dose, how, if any, that affects the, 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 mo the modality of what you're giving to yourself. Uh, meaning, what do, what do you well, mean? Do you, like, for instance, I put when I make um, my remedies, I put in um, 16 ounces of water and a couple of pills, a little pills with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the appropriate amount or less or more, or does that make, make a difference? Yeah, I would put in less. I would put in, you know, like a cup, a cup of water to a couple of pills because you're going to consume that in a short time, you know? Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, and then teaspoon doses and, uh, you know, you won't need it for long, maybe 10, 12 doses over a three, four day period. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you. Um, anything else? All right. Whatever you got, guys, is what you got. Whether you got a 6C, 12C, 30C, 200C, just, just take whatever you have. Try and get whatever you need at all times. Place a pellet or two under the tongue or take water doses. And when relief happens, take it down. Reduce the frequency, but don't stop entirely, especially if you have fractures. Continue to take it. Um, I didn't stop Arnica until the bruise was well and gone. You know, I took other, and I took other remedies as, as required. But uh, and especially if you have fevers along with that, don't stop taking your remedies until you're out of the danger zone. Especially if you have gangrene or if you have sepsis, you have infections, continue to take the remedies for a while. You don't want things returning. And that is that. And I'm going to now stop recording. Uh, if anyone has any important questions that we want to record, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to stop recording. Yeah? Yes. <laughs>